Thank you. Well, I have known Racine for more than 20 years, and congratulations for his birthday. I fly all the way from Taiwan for this conference, which is actually unusual for me. Uh, in any case, uh, Racine certainly is one of the most original mathematicians that I know of. It still takes time for me to understand his work, since the first time I learned his work on homological media symmetry which I'm still struggling to understand. Uh, although I always like to learn things more in a geometric manner, um, I'm not an algebraic person. But still, um, that inspired a great deal about the geometry that I've been doing, uh, including the SYC conjecture. So today's uh, talk is uh, somewhat related to trying to understand meter symmetry in a geometrical manner to the extent that I believe what uh, geometry tells me. It may not be accurate, but still a lot of interesting geometry come out from that. So, so this is the work that I have been doing with uh, Zhang, uh, who was my postdoc uh, at one point. Now he is in Erwan. Um, five years ago, we have been working on this. Um, so, Calabria would be uh, defined to be those with first train class equals zero. And as we know, in the last 30 years, uh, we have been talking about meter symmetry, uh, which is one of the most important uh, symmetry for Calabria manifolds. Um, it began with the important observation by several people in 1989, which is just a flip of a side of the representation of superconformal algebra. So a simple consequence is, uh, is that the Calabria manifold will appear in pairs where the x11 and the x21 would be flipped, would be in the change. That's, of course, uh, the, most sim uh, the simplest part of the middle ch uh, change. But still, that was an important observation and, um, and has inspired many people to do computer search for it at the very beginning. And then, of course, the very fundamental work due to Candelas and others is to compute the counting function of the rational curve on the quintet. That really makes uh, mathematicians change their mind about what physicists are doing. And that was a very good, important consequence of understanding how to identify topological A and B model. And this has inspired many mathematical work some of them are actually um, uh, contribute by conservation on uh, understanding local localization, and many, many people have contributed to the work. So uh, I'm glad that some of them was proved rigorously, but, but still depending on the formula uh, constructed by Candelas and all. So it's not a deep understanding yet, even though some formula were proved. Um, well, as we know, uh, historically, in 1994, in ICM lecture, Conservich gave the first important uh, talk on the homological meter symmetry conjecture. That was before the brain uh, was invented, the deep brain was invented by physicists. So that was fantastic, and he proposed that the derived Fukaya category on sympathetic manifold as a meter equivalent to the derived category of coherent sieves, which we have learned in the last few days a great deal about, a great deal of activities in the last few days that we saw, which I'm not competent uh, to talk about actually. I'm not familiar with category theory. Uh, so we will be very much more low key, well, no, no category here. And uh, we will talk about geometry that we learned. Um, most of the questions remain none, none, nonetheless because most of the work has been dealing with toric geometry, which we know how to compute. But still, there are a great deal of uh, interesting questions has not been answered for more general Calabrian manifolds. So today, I would like to um, consider uh, those which are not Kähler. 
The reason I'm interested in not Kata, Carabao, Manifest, not only because uh, in dimension bigger than Euro 3, there are many more non Kata Manifest than we can imagine. But also, I want to single out the sympathetic structure of the manifold in distinguish uh, from complex structure. And non Kata complex manifold give rise to sympathetic structure uh, by itself, and we can understand it better. So, um, so a large class of non kala carabial uh, free force were known and due to a construction by Clemens and uh, Freeman, Robert Freeman. So these are well known by, to many people, but I will talk about it first anyway. So we start out from a smooth carabial free force. Why? Let's call it. And there is a collection of mutually disjoint rational curves sitting in Y. These curves are supposed rational curves and has normal bundles O minus 1 plus O minus 1. So it can be broke down. And um, so you broke it down following Clemens, and you obtain singular Carabial manifold with ordinary double point. So there's a well known construction. Then Freeman proposed a condition to deform uh, X0 into smooth complex manifold. So the condition was well known. Uh, Freeman did the infinitesimal deformation and 10 later uh, make it to be uh, uh, more than infinitesimal. Anyway, after you obtain a smooth complex manifold, the canonical canonical light bundle of the resulting manifold is still trivial. So it can be deformed to a Moises or manifold, and it is carabial in the sense that the canonical light bundle is trivial, so first train class equals zero. But now in general, it's non kata The reason is that each time when you do this, you are killing the second body number. Uh, and eventually, you can kill them all. So there's no second body number whatsoever and therefore cannot be Kata, uh, for sure. So in this case, um, by in general, um, well, if the uh, homology is right, you prove that the manifold is actually diffeomorphic to connect sum of S3 cross S3, uh, according to the theorem of wall. So there's a bunch of very nice, interesting manifolds, which is just like donuts, generalized Riemann surface in high dimension. So there are handles given by S3 cross S3. So beautiful manifolds. And this is a very nice uh, manifold, although it's not in Kata. And um, so um, this construction sometimes is called conifold transition. Um, it's uh, a global version of conifold transitions. In 1987, Miles Re make an interesting proposal, although he refused to call it a conjecture. He called it um, fantasy, uh, fantasy, and so people sometimes call it Ries fantasy. He said, uh, this uh, vast collection of Carabial manifolds in general with completely different topology can be connected uh, if they are deformable to Moisin or manifold this manifold can fit into a single universal moduli space uh, in which uh, each of them can be connected to another one precisely through the clemens freeman uh, conifold transition. So that was nice if any Carabial manifold can be tunneling to another one through such a construction. And uh, then we can hopefully understand each other by the, this tunneling. But of course, this is very a non-standard way of moving from one algebraic man manifold to another one, uh, not uh, what algebraic geometer would normally do. Uh, but here, it's clear that we have to go through non kata manifolds because the in-between are uh, connect sum or S3 cross S3. So if we take Ries proposal seriously, we got to understand this non kata Carabial manifolds. So we have to understand the tunneling, how they move from one to another one, and what kind of geometry we can give it to them. So that's one of the motivations I am interested in 
studying non-killer metaphors. Uh, at the same time, uh, when Richard Thomas uh, uh, came to uh, Harvard, I think in 1999, we were interested uh, in the mirror of such a construction. So we look at the sympathetic mirror of the Clements Freeman construction, calling for transition. So you remember when we um, go uh, in the Clements Freeman construction, uh, we blow down the S2, the rational curves, which are S2, and create a S3, uh, a Lagrangian cycle. So we said, why not go the reverse? Instead of uh, shrinking the S2 to a point, I um, mean, to, to move it to S3, we go backwards. We move S3 to S2 instead. And in this way, we can construct uh, new sympathetic manifolds. So um, just similar to what Freeman uh, do, there is a condition, global condition, for shrinking the uh, Lagrangian S3, disjoint Lagrangian S3 together, to, in order to form a smooth, um, globally defined sympathetic manifold. So in this form, we kill um, uh, S3, H3, the third cohomology, in order to create second homology. So, uh, so we shrink the Lagrangian free cycle, replace them by sympathetic two sphere. And this was proposed by uh, the paper uh, appeared in 2002 by Smith, uh, Thomas, and myself. Um, so the, um, we were able to construct many sympathetic, new sympathetic manifold in this way. But fortunately, we could not go all the way uh, uh, in the most general situation. But nonetheless, we have found a lot of uh, sympathetic manifold in this way. Eventually, uh, we would hope to get uh, manifolds which is um, connection of CP3. So we expect uh, connection of CP3 to, be, to play a role like connection of S3 cross S3. So connection of S3 cross S3 behave like non-Kähler complex manifold, and connection of CP3 will behave like sympathetic manifold, which admits uh, no, not compatible uh, complex structure. So we expect these two constructions are mirror to each other. One is connection of S3 cross S3, and the other one is connection of CP3, <coughs> which admits sympathetic structure but not complex structure. So, uh, so we call this a sympathetic carabials, although they have no complex structure um, that we know of. And there are many other people who have contributed uh, to this kind of construction, notably due to Fry and Penoff, uh, who construct a uh, simply connect sympathetic carabial manifold with the first Betty number equals zero. So, um, so I like to study uh, the geometry of such manifolds um, and hope to understand in what sense they are mirrored to each other. Uh, although geometrically they are very tempting to say, to see that they are mirrored to each other. Um, well, for different perspective, another reason for consider non kähler mirror pair or mirror uh, of Carabials come from the SYC description of mirror symmetry, where we study a T3 vibration. So T3 is a Lagrangian toroid, special Lagrangian toroid, and we apply T duality on the fiber in order to obtain the mirror geometry. So this, of course, has been clarified a great deal uh, in the world of gross uh, cyber, seabed. And, uh, and extending the SYC idea, the T duality, we also like to consider applying T duality on non kähler Carabial manifold that are um, torus vibration. We hope to apply this consideration 
to the pair that we discussed earlier. Um, now, the important question is what kind of geometric structure we should put on a non-Kahler Calabrian manifold. Um, so, um, well, uh, we have to put in uh, constraints like supersymmetry and uh, what kind of geometric structure we can put on. It's kind of tough to look at it from the point of view of geometry because we don't know much geometry of non uh complex manifolds or, <clears throat> or sympathetic manifolds for that matter, unless there's some almost complex structure uh, to help. Anyway, so we look for some motivation from physics. Um, well, in already in the mid 80s, 1986, people has been considering non kahler carabials when we consider flux and planes wrapping, wrap, uh, uh, wrapping, uh, uh, cy wrapping cycles of the internal six dimensional space. Um, <clears throat> So when there are flux, such as uh, similar to electric or magnetic fields, and the planes are introduced, they represent additional energy, and that needs to have a bad reaction to deform the space itself. So although the background could be Kähler, but after you react to the uh, flux or the um, uh, planes, the manifold need not be Kähler in general. And the supersymmetry condition of the string tell us that the internal space in general is not a Kähler manifold when flux and the planes are introduced. So this, for example, appeared in the paper of Andy Stromager in 1986, here where he wrote down uh, some equation in relation to heterotic string. Um, so and this Strominger's paper was on heterotic string. But here, um, we are more interesting at this moment to 2A and 2B string freely for the general supersymmetric condition that we are interested in. And uh, we kind of motivate by the generalized complex formulation uh, introduced by Hitchin. And uh, there are equations which uh, we have been studying uh, with uh, um, Zhang. Uh, they are motivated by uh, several authors, uh, especially Tomasillo, who was visiting Harvard at the time. So we worked with him on understanding these equations. We found some interesting cohomologies for generalized complex geometry, which I will describe here. So um, these are generalized complex uh, structure formulation uh, inspired by supersymmetry. So first of all, let us recall that the kähler carabial condition on a six dimensional manifold can be described as the requirement of a SU free structure with a kähler form, Hermitian form, small omega and capital omega which satisfy the closed condition. One is the complex integrability for complex structure and the sympathetic structure that d omega equals zero. And also the Ricci flat condition, which is a complex Munchen pair equation on the last one, the Ricci flat condition. So these are the uh, structure related to Carabial uh, structure, which give rise to SU3 Holonomy. Now, in the case of type 2b with flux, uh, so we study the presence of the oriented part, O5 planes, uh, wrap over holomorphic curves. It becomes the following conditions, turns out. Uh, one is uh, the capital omega is closed, so complex structure integrable. And the balance condition, this omega, not necessarily is k now, is omega square in the complex free manifold to be closed. 
And also, there's a uh, distribution function f satisfy this equation dd bar exponential uh, f times small omega. Uh, dd bar weight is equal to a distribution, low b. So b is the sum of uh, currents or holomorphic curves, and low b is a point grade deal of it. So it's, it's a four form in the sense of distribution is equal to the left hand side. And f is defined by the last uh, equation here, replacing the Carabial equation, then the holomorphic free form omega wedge omega bar was originally small omega to the power q without f. Now with f, it becomes like that. So these are the equation, the supersymmetric uh, symmetry equation uh, for the Carabial manifold with complex structure, uh, but no k structure. So the supersymmetry is replaced by the second condition, balance condition. Now, uh, so the k condition is now relaxed to the balance condition, which is written down in here, plus a source term equation, which is the third equation I wrote down earlier. Uh, now, this is an interesting equation, the balance uh, condition. It was introduced in uh, physics literature without knowing some literature in uh, mathematics, which was studied uh, quite a bit earlier in 1982 by Mary Louise Michelson in Stony Brook. Uh, already she was studying uh, manifold, which is balanced. So this condition is simply says, given a Hermitian uh, one one form to the power n minus one is close. That's the, in general, that's a balanced condition. So uh, this is rather interesting uh, condition, actually, mathematically speaking. Uh, because uh, it's preserved under proper holomorphic submersions. And most remarkably, it is preserved under birational transformations. And we know that Kalelian condition is not preserved under birational transformation. But on the other hand, uh, it's known that uh, balance condition is preserved under birational transform. So it's natural for birational geometry. And there are many uh, such manifolds. Um, in particular, the Trista space uh, are all balanced. Uh, Trista space over four dimensional anti self dual manifolds. So I construct some of the Carabial manifolds by taking branch cover over the Trista space. So in particular, you will take the connect sum of CP2, which is anti self dual and the Trista space is good, it's a balanced condition, and you can do a double cover to obtain non k carabial space. So there are many modules of manifold, although they are not k but actually the Trista space could be modules on. There are quite a lot of them, including the Trista space for the uh, connection of CP2. So there are quite a lot of such manifolds. Um, now, so in about five years ago, Fu, uh, Jun Li, and I proved that uh, in the uh, deformation given by, um, uh, proposed by Clemens and, uh, and Freeman, when you do the cognitive transition, the manifold, although um, it's non kähler it does emit a smooth balance metric. Uh, so, Although um, there's no a priori geometry, in fact, we can put a balance uh, condition over those transitions. So um, in particular, therefore, we have balance metric on connection of S3 cross S3. Now, actually, we'd like to do more. Uh, there's some equation which we take into account of the back reaction to the supersymmetric condition here. And this uh, will make the geometry to, to be more rigid. So in other words, there's a, uh, besides the equation of existing balance metric, there's an equation similar to Carabial condition, which will make the uh, modular space with finite dimensional. This need to be solved. And this is still not known for this uh, case. But I expect that to be true. So now, 
Well, I want to uh, look back in the middle uh, situation of this whole thing now. Uh, so this is uh, very similar to the Maxwell equation. Can you think about it? So balance condition is d omega squared equals zero. And then the source equation, which I wrote down as a third equation, 2i dd bar ef omega equal to rho b, similar to Maxwell equation. Uh, so if we emphasize uh, omega to be right star of omega square, then the two equation can actually be written in this form. Uh, so d omega square is equal to zero, and dd bar of theta star omega square equal to rho b. So it's the analog of uh, the Maxwell equation. So in in that way, we want to look at the middle of these two equations. So, well, the Maxwell equation is this one. Uh, so the curvature two form is closed, uh, the Bianchi identity. And then d star f2 equal rho e. There's a point grade due of the electric charge configuration. So this could be looked at as the analog of the previous equation sitting here. d omega square equal zero and dd bar star omega square uh, equal rho b. So if we do that, uh, as, as I said, you will linearize the uh, Maxwell equation, this exact analog of the equation I wrote down, the, li the linearized part. OK. So here, the important point is that there's a uh, cohomology or the harmonic condition uh, related to the uh, Maxwell equation, namely close and also co-close. And that's the analog, uh, the previous one uh, equation is the analog, is d of the four form, omega square is now look as a unknown. And uh, so d of the linearized uh, of the four form is equal to zero, and d d bar star of that equal to zero is the second equation, the source term equation. So this will be looked as a harmonic condition for the two, two element. And the natural uh, cohomology here turns out is a bot chain cohomology. The bot chain cohomology is simply kernel of D uh, as a PP form, uh, divided out by the image of DD bar in the PP form, or PQ, in the, make it more general. So this cohomology was introduced by bot chain and also Apple. So, um, so this exactly fits uh, the core for the uh, condition that I imposed earlier. So therefore, the bot chain cohomology is a natural one to use for studying complex balance manifold, because that's how the balance condition come in. Well, of course, naturally, if the manifold is clear, the DD bar lemma holds, and the bot chain uh, and the usual double cohomology are in fact isomorphic, so there's nothing really new. But if we are interested in non kähler manifold, the DD bar lemma no more holes, and then this will be more important to use the DD bar cohomology. Um, so now, we are interested in the symplectic analog of this uh, condition that we just wrote down. Uh, so, so that's what uh, the point of this lecture, Lock, looking at the analog conditions for symplectic manifolds. So first of all, the mean deal of the manifold is 2A3. And we, uh, in there, in the complex 2B3, is actually the exponential i omega is an important one. You look at the real part of exponential i omega, then the condition of omega square to be closed is equivalent to d of the real part of exponential i omega equal to zero. And now exponential i omega is supposed to be in the change with capital omega, the free form. So therefore, the middle of the condition of balance condition d omega square equal to zero, we interpret it as d of the real part of capital omega equals zero. So the free seal form has the property that d real part of omega equals zero. 
So this is uh, also suggests uh, by string theory for the for the symplectic calling for transition that Smith, Thomas, and I did. So uh, this condition will be part of the type 2a supersymmetric condition in the presence of oriented fault. This explains the wrap over special Lagrangian submanifolds. So now putting the equations together, the Miller of the equation that I wrote down uh, from the uh, complex side would be this free equation, which is now in the symplectic side. So we have a uh, symplectic equation, d omega equals 0, the symplectic form. And then we have a uh, free seal form, which says that d will part of omega equals 0, and also a analog of dd bar, which I will define, d plus and d minus star of the exponential minus f will capital omega equal low a, where a would be special Lagrangian submanifolds, which is mirror to the holomorphic curves that we discussed earlier. So d plus and d minus will be linear symplectic defensive oper operator that can be fought as the symplectic analog of the <coughs> complex uh, double operators, d and d bar. So we shall now go into those definitions and the way that it evolves. Anyway, so the source term equation that we were talking would be these two uh, equations. After you linearize, the third equation is d plus d minus star of that equals zero. So this equation would be looked at as a harmonic condition for cohomology. Just like in the previous case, uh, we, we use the Ramco homology for Maxwell equations. So we introduced some cohomology. Uh, so the Ramco homology is kernel D divided by image D. That's corresponding to the Maxwell equation. <coughs> and the broad term uh, condition for the complex deformation. And <coughs> So type 2 B there. So 2A here is the one that we introduced, the kernel D divided by image of D plus D minus, which I will talk immediately. So this is second order defensive operators, D plus D minus. Uh, so we search for uh, symplectic cohomology. We are surprised to find that actually there are more than one finite dimensional symplectic cohomology of differential forms. And <clears throat> so we found that it's related to the uh, Lepsius maps and uh, also some cohomology ring and the A infinity structure behind those ring, which I will discuss now. Um, so we will talk about symplectic form and then we will talk about primitive form, just like in the complex case when we have a uh, symplectic manifold. So primitive form are those that vanishes under contraction with omega inverse. Omega is not degenerate, so you can talk about omega inverse. So these are the conditions, uh, just similar to what we learn in complex geometry. So uh, we take the interior product of the form so B is called a primitive uh, defender form if we satisfy this uh, contrasting condition. And um, so this primitive form uh, will be due, pointedly due to Lagrangian or co-isotropic condition on subspaces. So co-isotropic submanifold are those uh, with dimension n plus k, so manifold is two n dimension. So those n plus k manifold where omega to the power k plus one restrict to it is equal to zero. So when k equals zero, these are Lagrangian, Lagrangian condition. Omega restrict to the cycle is equal to zero. So for us, co-isotropic submanifold are this kind of manifold that we introduced. Well, that's well known. Um, so we understand that, uh, in fact, co-isotropic subspace are important for mirror symmetry. 
also, especially when we want to uh, expand Fukar category uh, in order for conservative homological mirror symmetry to hold. Anyway, so we are interested in, uh, in the primitive cohomology uh, because, uh, partially because uh, they are primarily due to submanifold, which is co isotropic. Now let's come into understanding of the lapsus decomposition in general. So given any dependent form, K form, we can decompose it in the following way. So the B case are the primitive forms and decompose uniquely in that way. BK plus omega wedge BK minus two plus omega square wedge BK minus four, et cetera. So, um, so this, P, this primitive form in the decomposition, BK, BK minus two, uh, you need to determine uh, by the form AK and the way that the sympathetic form uh, omega there. These, of course, are the left decomposition from the SL2 algebra acting on the space of all different forms. <clears throat> So we now have this decomposition, and we can write the, um, so in the case of six dimensions, you can see how it looks like. These are the simple uh, diagram that you can see. So <clears throat> this um, is symmetric under the uh, central X at the middle dimension. So they flip from one side to another side. And we can define a reflection operator mapping from left to the right, which we call star R. So this operator mapping left to right because it's symmetric in the uh, uh, vertical X. So, so we, will, we shall use this operator star R later. So for example, star R B2 is omega wedge B2 for that three dimensional manifold. Well, since omega is sympathetic, D of a K form naturally decomposed in a simple form. The important thing is, in case um, uh, it acts on primitive components, when it acts on primitive form, exterior differentiation only sits inside PS plus one plus omega wedge PS minus one. This gives rise to two operators. So D plus maps the primitive S form to primitive S plus one form. D minus maps S form to S minus one, one form. So one increase uh, one degree and the other one uh, decreased one degree. So it's similar to uh, the D bar operators. And we in fact interpret in that way. So these are natural forms associated to the sympathetic geometry. So we can write, write exterior differentiation to be d plus plus omega wedge d minus. So this gives you a sympathetic decomposition of exterior derivatives. And the fact that d square equals zero implies similar condition for d plus and d minus. So d plus square equals d minus square equals zero. And they anti commute with each other also. So it's very similar to D bar operators. And um, it turns out associated to these operators, there's a elliptic complex associated to it. And uh, it maps primitive forms horizontally. And there's one important connection is drawing. Pn to Pn in the middle dimension by d plus d minus. Uh, that one does not change the degree. One go up, one go down, so preserve the degree. And this turns out to be elliptic complex. Uh, we found out this uh, first, and then found out actually Smith, R.T. Smith did this one for four dimensions in 1976. And also later, we also found out Eastwood has done this around the same time independent with us. So anyway, so we get an elliptic complex associated to the uh, sympathetic uh, geometry. Uh, 
associated with this elliptic complex, we found uh, four different finite dimensional cohomology, primitive form, which can be looked at as a sympathetic invariance for non scalar sympathetic manifolds. So associated with this elliptic cohomology, they are all finite dimensional because this is elliptic uh, complex. So we draw as a dialect analog with double cohomology, uh, Apple cohomology, and Botchan cohomology, exactly the same way uh, we look at. So um, all acting on uh, primitive forms. So, um, so the left hand side is analog to the right hand side as you can see from this picture. And we are interested in this, um, uh, the last one, kernel D in the set of P3 and image D plus D minus in the set of P3, the primitive free forms, in the case of six dimensional space, as related to the synthetic type 2A string equations. Well, a simple example was a Kodaira First, a uh, four manifold, uh, which is a T2 five base and over T2. They are global, globally defined one forms, uh, left invariant one forms, E1, E2, E3, and E4. Uh, so these are torus bundle over tori, and they have a sympathetic, naturally sympathetic form given by E1 wedge E2 plus E3 wedge E4. And they are close, the omega is close, easily checked. And you can check that the primitive uh, uh, form has extra element, E2 wedge E3, is <coughs> which is in trivial in Durham cohomology, but non-trivial in this D plus D minus cohomology that we are talking about. So the primitive cohomology is not the same as Durham cohomology. And uh, while well, we like to understand what they mean, and uh, they can be thought as a point grade deal of a Lagrangian submanifold L that wraps the torus fiber over a point on the base tori. And this tori uh, is trivial in standard cohomology. Uh, so um, with a probability choice of an almost complex structure uh, represented by the omega-2 seal form as written here, E1 plus IE2 wedge E3 plus IE4, the Lagrangian, uh, this L, becomes a special Lagrangian cycle, as you can see from this calculation. The real part over it equals zero, imaginary part is a volume. And this is a tribute in homology, and therefore it's not the same, well, it cannot occur in scalar geometry. So this is for the uh, Kuraira first example. Uh, so we have a um, non-trivial uh, element in the primitive cohomology, but not uh, so in Durham cohomology. Anyway, uh, this should be interesting, and uh, so we like to talk about this more. So we look at the filter forms besides the form that we discussed earlier. It turns out to be more natural to look at filter forms. The K forms, as we said, can be decomposed uniquely as BK plus omega wedge BK minus two, etc. And we look at the filter according to the degree. Pi zero is BK, pi one is BK plus omega wedge BK minus two, etc. So we filter the K forms by this uh, filtering uh, property. And uh, so we have space of P filter forms. So we have written it in this form. So starting from primitive uh, forms to the space of all forms in that way. So getting a little bit step by step more complicated. Okay. So there are elliptic complex and cohomologies for these P filter forms as well. And we found that the following complex is elliptic. So we have D plus mapping this way and coming back and D plus D minus. Where D plus is the projection uh, to this filter complex of the exterior differentiation, 
D minus is the join star R, D star R. That, the star R was defined earlier. Uh, so so uh, we have uh, this filter cohomology and all that related to this elliptic complex. Um, well, these are related to, um, in the cohomology level, is related to the standard lapses map, which is just obtained by taking wedge product with omega to the power r. And, uh, well, of course, these maps on the cohomology level are purely cohomology, uh, cohomological. Um, so this map has kernel and co-kernel. Uh, this is, uh, turns out to be exactly encoded in the synthetic cohomology. And these are given by this uh, long excess sequence involving primitive cohomology that we defined earlier. So uh, the L uh, is a map from the RAM cohomology. And then there's um, kernel and co-kernel, which implies uh, this last uh, equation in the case of d equals 6, co-kernel plus kernel, or the lapses map. So uh, in fact, there is a triangle, uh, simple exact triangle, the map, the lapses map from the RAM cohomology, and in between there's this filter cohomology, uh, the synthetic cohomology we were discussing earlier. Of course, um, the kernel and co-kernel on the map can change according to the cohomology class of omega, so the dimension of the synthetic cohomology can change accordingly. So they are not topological invariance, but synthetic invariance. Um, now, the interesting thing is actually define a product for the primitive form, and more generally for pure, for P filter forms. This gives the filter cohomology ring structure, which is different from the, uh, the, the RAM cohomology ring. Um, so the question is to understand a product which will preserve the filter cohomology. And um, so there's a natural algebraic structure on this filter form, uh, uh, this form turns out. That takes a while for us to come up with such a product. And the product, the, the, the ring structure that we define on this primitive cohomology ring uh, turns out to be different, for sure, from the Durham cohomology ring. And uh, we shall uh, give some examples. Um, the product we define uh, is interesting. It involves first order uh, derivative operators. The product itself involves uh, differentiation. Um, so I will tell you what that is. So. First of all, um, this follows from understanding the grading that we have before. We just write down the filter algebra in this way. This is the elliptic complex that I discussed earlier. Uh, d plus at the first line and the second line is d minus and joined by d plus d minus. Um, so this complex has uh, Defensive maps from Fj to Fj plus 1, the filter cohomology. And for the first part, it's just d plus. And the middle part is d plus d minus, as you see here. And the last part is d minus. So there's a second order operator appears suddenly. And it has the property that is a complex in the sense dj plus 1, dj equals 0. So the so every guy is first order except the middle guy. So this, this middle guy that caused some difference. And we would like the differential that we are operating on the filter complex satisfy the grading and satisfy the runner's rule. So that's what we want. So this will preserve, this make sure the product would be well defined in the co primitive cohomology that we define. 
So for example, in the case of the product and P1 cross P2 equal F1 cross F2, it required the following property. This is a property that is uh, different from the other first order operators. We need to have these properties in order for our uh, Rider's rule to be true for D <coughs> free. So there's a second order operator on the left in this equation and first order operator on the right only. And yet we want, we insist them to be equal. So therefore, the only possibility comes out from the fact that the product itself should involve some differentiation. And so that's what we do. So we define the product on primitive form, on the filter primitive form in the following way. So BJ product BK is defined on the right hand side. So it involves um, differentiation D and D minus and uh, projection and star operator. Uh, the, <coughs> the rest is simpler except the first one. So uh, this turns out they are great commutative and satisfy the roundness rule that we expect. And L inverse is defined by this uh, operator, which is uh, the inverse of the Lepsius map. So, um, so this gives rise a, uh, the primitive product and its generalization of filter forms give rise a ring structure for the filter cohomology. FPH. Uh, this looks a little bit strange. Yeah. On zero forms, is it the usual product? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. So this is a interesting uh, product. It is a kind of example of this uh, A infinite structure, which I never uh, learned before when I was a student. Uh, but anyway, so I remind myself, presumably everybody here, or you know what they are. So these are the maps, uh, multilinear maps, and uh, on a great vector space of degree two minus k satisfy the strong homotopy associative conditions. Um, and this, uh, so m1 increase the grading by one and x like uh, differentiation. And m preserve the grading corresponding to the product structure. And therefore, it's just a Rhinus right product rule when M1 is a defensive. M3 measures the associativity of the product map. So these are the conditions that uh, we like to exhibit. And in fact, in the product structure that we propose, M4 and M5 and on are all equal to zero. So I only care about M1, M2, and M3. So, uh, so for primitive forms, the M3 looks like that. So what happens is that our product is not associative, and it is measured by this uh, obstruction, and yet it is commutative and sets the Linus rule, and therefore it defines a nice uh, product on the cohomology nonetheless, and um, it's still associative in the cohomology level. So therefore, <coughs> Uh, well, all the problem, as I said, is caused by the fact we have a second order operator in our uh, elliptic complex, uh, d plus d minus. Um, so it seems to be natural because, as I said, it comes out from the study of the attempt to understand mirror symmetry in uh, uh, 2A theory. Uh, I think uh, we are still developing uh, uh, this theory and understanding the harmonic theory behind it. If I, you give me an almost complex structure J, we have an elliptic operator associated to it. So you can talk about the similar thing as what people have been talking. Uh, so given the J structure, we can talk about uh, elliptic operator, but we have elliptic complex uh, no matter what. So, we are still developing this whole theory. And whether there's some quantum correlation or not, uh, we will see. I think it should be there, but we have not developed into it. It is still doing the classical elliptic complex associated this whole thing. So these are naturally attached to synthetic geometry. 
which I hope would be interesting and useful. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Yeah. I was wondering if uh, there's an equivariant version of this, if you have a Hamiltonian group action on the, on the manifold. Oh, I'm sure that should be, but I never haven't thought about it yet. We're still developing it. Yeah. 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 Lagrangian manifolds up to Hamiltonian isotopy, and in fact, one can have even really simple examples in two dimensions. Okay. Yeah, and actually, found out with with Milan uh, that one has stability structure is very exotic one, even for curves on the surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the question is, this is uh, if considered kind of conditions of volume element, ah, I, I, I have no idea how to relate this real three form and. As a Galois condition, it's not. Well, they're not yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's yeah. only real part of the form. Yeah. No, yeah. So, uh, and, and how it depends on generalized dimension that is there is a generalized complex structure. Right? Well, there's a generalized complex structure formulation, more complicated, which I don't want to go into. <laughs> Are there more questions? Well, then, thank you again. Yeah, okay.